We also have a uh, structure out here, which has obviously been a, a, a big issue. It's been, it's been a big issue for Surfrider Foundation. Um, uh, we have we have we have a sea a seawall out of Montauk with the with the um, Army Corps looking to build a seawall bigger. Our 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 um, feeling is that you know these are band-aid structures um, uh, that cost a lot of money. It's a very expensive band-aid. Um, we, we're wondering about the um, you know whether this is a, a wise uh, investment and whether this is a precedent we want to set. I've looked at a lot of historical photographs and some of the older folks in Montauk may be able to say this, tell, tell us this, but in the days before this, before they really started in the 40s, putting these, these various, there's been about six revetments, six generations of revetments at, at Montauk Point. There was, there used to be a lens of sand around Montauk Point. Historically, you can see it in the old photographs. There hasn't been one there for many, many years now. I don't know if anybody remembers walking around that. Because these objects really change the dynamic. They're more fixed. They're fixed objects in a area. Now, uh, everybody, nobody wants to wear a cast uh, forever, right? Um, the Montauk Point. Now we've got. Um, I don't want to go too far into the Army Corps project, but one of the issues is we do have these. We have very serious projects happening in different places, um, being segmented from the the larger plan, which we're still waiting for the Army Corps to finish the Fire Island and Montauk Point study. Um, so we, we, need to, we need to encourage our elected officials to, to, to get the funding to finish these larger studies before we move ahead with actions and band-aid actions like this. Uh, one of the things that they, I found interesting is the core, we, we asked the core to tell us a little bit more about that project. And one of the things they did, they did tell us is that um, even if, when you build revetments, that they admit that the dynamics the dynamics of the, the, the protection that is offered temporarily by the structure that it, they will build at the ends of that, especially at the, the ends adjacent to the revetment, there's going to be continued erosion. So if, you have, if you're going to fortify a piece of the, the coastline, you really have to do the whole coastline. It's really not realistic. Uh, one of the things that uh, everybody in Montauk uh, knows is the tragedy here at Culloden. This is unintended consequences when you go into the littoral zone and you modify the natural processes and natural distribution of sediments in the littoral drift. They, uh, it's, it's catastrophic for the homeowners there. I've seen photos of sec tertiary dunes rolling out at, from these properties uh, seaward. And now they basically have, um, you know, I've been documenting uh, 12, um, 12 period, um, 12 second period storm surge coming right up against these bulkhead and rack lines well, well landward of the foundations of these houses. The, the photos tell the story and everybody's been there. Why, why I highlight this is when you, when this is an Army Corps action with all the, all the, uh, all the scientists studying all this and telling us that yes, well we can extend the jetties and it's going to do this and it's going to do that. It's very hard and we do not have the science to predict what is going to happen when we go into littoral areas with high wave energy and we create structures. We don't have that ability. It's, is it, this is a huge failure here in Montauk and it's something that we need to take into account. When we talk about armoring the south side or, or alternatives for the south side, what we have to do is look to right here in Montauk to the north side and see what has happened. This is not what these homeowners had bargained for when uh, they bought these houses. And I don't know what the future is um, for these people there. Um, the depth of the water just out, uh, see where the bulkheads and the revetments, is just getting deeper and deeper. The wave energy is so fierce coming off the structures that it's mining out more sediments and sending them down, down drift. And um, one, I, I, I studied a revetment in Florida, I'll run through these. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm sort of highlighting coastal structures because I'm fearful that uh, there's been some applications in downtown Montauk. Some of the hotels have applied for, um, one particularly had applied for um, a stone revetment. And um, I think it's the wrong direction for our downtown beaches. We'll, we'll get a little bit more into that. Um, as you can see here uh, in this slide, um, a uh, homeowner was allowed to build a, a seawall here. You have uh, sand beaches on both sides, and it really tells a story. Once the seawall is in place, the refraction waves uh, suspend sediments with such high energy, and they move them down in the littoral drift. They also mine out 
And there's, there's quite deep water here. Um, even, the, even at low tides, there's deep water here. There's no beach at, even at low tide in this area. So um, this, this, this illustrates, uh, I've got a couple of different slides. You can see the size of the swell that actually comes in and rolls across almost like a surfable wave that comes right in here. Meanwhile, you've got a beach there. Um, you know, is this the future of downtown Montauk? Is this what we, beach here on one side, beach on the other side? This is by Breakers in Palm Beach. Um, these people had to walk across, they had to climb along the revetments to get across the beach. There's the aerial that tells the story also. I mean, you can see what the dynamic is. If we, if we don't want, if you want, um, if home, you know, the, the, the downtown Montauk uh, property owners want to, the, the, the hotels want to keep their hotels on the beach because they have a beach. But once they put the revetment there, they won't have a beach anymore. So th there, there's a little bit of a disconnect that I've, I've noticed um, between the economic um, interests and livelihood interests of, of people like the folks downtown Montauk and our planners. But I really think that, that, there's, that there's no dis there shouldn't be any disconnect. We have um, these, these, home, these, these um, FEMA has just done new maps, January, right? Those, those hotels down in downtown Monta, they may have finished floors at seven or eight or maybe nine. When they rebuild, they have to rebuild at 17 feet for the first finished floor. The time to start planning how those buildings will be rebuilt is with the planners in East Hampton Town, and it's time to start today. If if you're a business person, you have to plan for the future. If, if we do some very dynamic planning and restructure that, that business district along the oceanfront in Montauk, and we do it over a, a few year period before we have a catastrophic event, when, when we do have an event and they want to go for a permit, they'll have the engineering plans, they'll have the whole planning done, and they'll be able to walk into Don's office and say, I'm going to start construction tomorrow. If they, and, and, and business, Time is money. If you, want, if you want to put hotels and people in hotel rooms, you've got to rebuild. I think business owners should be hungry to work with town planners to figure out how to rebuild these structures as quickly as possible, where they will go. And, but there's been, I talked to East Hampton Town planners, and there's been this, this sort of friction between nobody wants to do the long-term planning. That's good business. Doing this kind of planning is good business. Get this plans done. Get the construction done as soon as possible after the after the event. So that's the argument, I and mean, you can see um, what we don't want to have happen in Montauk, downtown Montauk. This is not this is not Montauk's future. We can do better than this. Even on a satellite very high up in the air, you can see how artificial that is, and uh, what really happens. No more beach. Um, so we, we're going to change the name to Palm Revetment, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea, I don't know. It's probably not going to fly down. Um, I read this statement, I said, this is Montauk, you know. Where extreme weather events become more intense and more frequent, the economic and social costs of these events will increase. And these increases will be substantial in the areas mostly directly affected. We're out here right in the, right in the hurricane zone. So we've got a lot of intelligent people here, a lot of resources. Um, we, we could be a model for the rest of the way that the nation does things. I think we can start at Montauk Point by moving the Montauk Point Lighthouse <laughs> landward. But, uh, you know, um, we, we, we could lead the country. Everybody, all coastal uh, areas are going to be facing these challenges. And I think, wh why can't we do it right here in Montauk? Why can't we all come together and um, get, our, get our people together? Um, try to get it started so that um, like uh, dynamic groups like CCOM could be you know there um, uh, and having quarterly meetings so we could really um, introduce these ideas that they're, they're complicated and sometimes dense but the reality is that we there we need to plan for the future plan before there's an event it's good for business it'll be good for the environment it'll be good socially for Montauk and um, it'll be good for the surf <laughs> Guaranteed. Thank you very much. Okay.